this is, this is, this is. Let's just jump right into this brand new episode of the podcast happening right now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys. If you're watching, you're probably watching on YouTube. Maybe you're watching on some other social media, but uh, full episodes available on my YouTube channel, Mike Herrera Video, and uh, everywhere you listen on the audio version, everywhere you listen to your podcast, you should find the Mike Herrera podcast. I don't know how you found it now. You're listening right now, right? So... <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much, you guys. Great episode for you. Very exciting episode because it's about you. That's right, another voicemail episode. You send in your voicemails, you call in, leave a message. Uh, I listen to it, we play it for everybody. I'll comment, I'll answer questions. Um, it doesn't have to be about music, but I love talking about songwriting and, and punk rock and all that. But uh, somebody wanted to hear about UFOs, you know, UFOs and, and all that. So maybe we'll get into it. Call me, t tell me about it, 360. 830-6660. That's my number. Call and leave a message. Uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Um, MXPX.com, you guys. Thank you so much for your support. It's really kept us going strong through 2020, through 2021. Box sets, in case you haven't heard, are going out. And we still have quite a few still to go out. Um, but we figure around mid-September, in a couple weeks, we should be should be everything out and i'll let you know when when it's all mailed but uh i've been working real hard we've got a team of people working hard on it and uh just thank you it's been amazing so aside from box set stuff there's been a lot going on behind the scenes in mxpx world uh been practicing with the guys i've been trying to write some songs we can talk about that later um we've been uh, working on new merch christmas is going to be here before you know it what is this world coming to you know it's just every time i blink it's a half a year later it's just crazy so uh we have been busy we have been busy thank you for your patience if you've been waiting for those box sets but uh they're they're on their way out there so i wish you the best of luck um MXPX.com, always the place to go to support what I do here with the podcast and what I do with MXPX and my solo stuff and all of it. So it's all MXPX.com and uh, anything you do, just you don't have to necessarily buy something every week or anything, but listening to the band, listening to the songs, uh, our newer stuff really helps us out a ton. MXPX.com, if you scroll down all the way down, second to last thing, there's the MXPX Challenge playlist. Uh, it's on a couple different streaming platforms, Apple, uh, Spotify, Deezer, Tidal, um, and then you can make your own if you're on Amazon or one of the other ones, but uh, that helps us out immensely, really, really makes a big difference in getting the algorithm set more towards recommending MXPX punk rock rather than just like only cover songs or only weird songs that we've done. So um, it's all good, but thank you for your support on that. Let's get into a few things. I want to talk about a couple things before I get into voicemails. One of those things is Rock On Crafted Lager. Sounds like a commercial. It's almost like a commercial, but <laughs> it's not a commercial. These guys, uh, Silver City Brewery has done an amazing job bringing uh, multiple companies together. So Rock On Crafted Lager is an American style lager that uh, was made with charity in mind. Um, so. Silver City Brewery teamed up with Crosby Hops and Sweet Relief Musicians Fund, and uh, and MXPX in in some ways we we are not technically it's not it's not a full on MXPX beer, but we were inspired to be part of the 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 project, and we inspired them in the making of the beer, and then they inspire us when we drink their beer to make better music. So it's a symbiotic relationship. But check it out, our logo is right there on the can if you're watching on on the YouTube channel you can see our logo right there so although it's not an MXPX beer it's part of the MXPX beer canon I think uh, rock on brewery or sorry rock on crafted lager Silver City Brewery and Crosby hops sweet relief musicians fund all those companies get together and make a great thing happen let's have some I know it's during the day but if you're listening at night no no shame Go for it. If you're listening here in the day, no shame. Do, do what you got to do. I'm just going to pour this just to have something while I, while I listen to your voicemails. But uh, this is a, a great, I love 
a really nice lager. Um, I'm not a, as much of a fan of, uh, you know, a really basic lager, but if it's a crafted lager, and I don't know what the difference is, but there's just a little more bite to it. I think the difference is is, is the alcohol content as well. This is, a, I think this is a five or a, yeah, this is 5%. And uh, that's that's about that's about normal for what I usually drink five and six percent beers. Yeah, again, I'll get crazy and go up to like seven, eight, nine, but that's uh, that's a headache waiting to happen for me if I, if I have too much of that. <laughs> Cheers, you guys, to the best life. Well, uh, so in case you're wondering, uh, profits go to Sweet Relief Musicians Fund to, uh, I don't know, they support musicians that are in need. Uh, we, we're, we're on the other side of that. We feel like we're, we're in a position to give. We're, we're very lucky to be here, very lucky to have amazing fans and, and uh, people that support what we do and listen to our music. So uh, it's great to be able to, to be part of a great project and a very, very, a very tasty project for that matter. And uh, I think you can get it around the country. Other breweries were, were invited to also brew Rock On, and so some of them may have done it. Maybe you could look into your local brewery and see if they're, they could still do it. You know, I'm sure it's not a, a deadline, but anyway, it's always a good cause, and uh, I love my beer, so cheers to you guys. Um, I wanted to talk about crabs because... <laughs> We got crabs. We really do constantly. <laughs> what I mean by that is uh, our neighbors, or where I live uh, here in Bremerton, our neighbor, she's great and she's world's best. Anybody that's heard me talk about world's best on a podcast, it's probably come up a few times, but this is our new world's best. Um, our new neighbor, well, we've, we've known her for a couple years now, maybe a year or two, but uh, pretty new. And she goes boating all the time and, and brings back crab and we'll just be like, Hey, I'm dropping a couple crab off on your porch. Don't for, don't, you know, know that they're there so you can bring them in and put them in the fridge. But she'll like, she'll cook them and then give them to us. And it's amazing. And thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, but I've had to <laughs> learn how to clean crabs. And, and the first time I did it, was like I, I watched a YouTube video. I literally had had the YouTube thing on, and I'm like, what is that? What are they saying to do? And, you know, they have all the tools. And and it, eventually I got the hang of it. And, and <laughs> after, you know, a full couple summers of, of cleaning crabs now and again, I just did it this morning. And uh, I'm pretty fast at it, actually. I, I know exactly what to do. I don't need gloves or anything. I just use my hands for everything. And, uh, you know, you crack the, sh you know, you, you break the sh top shell off, off of the body and then you use, you use a, 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 uh, one of their legs to grab the, the tail piece and then you pull the tail piece out and then the guts all come out. And it's, uh, it's a process for sure, but it's, it's really gotten so much easier the more I do it. And that, that's taught me a lot about life, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, it's it's a reminder. It's not something I didn't know before, which is, you know, the more time you spend doing something, the easier it gets and the, and, and the better you'll get at it. And um, even things that are hard maybe don't get m much easier, but I think they get a, a little easier. I think just in your mind, if you, you don't have that anxiety of not knowing how to do something, that's a big factor too. So I'm not saying that you'd be like, uh, worried about cleaning a crab, but somebody might, somebody might be really freaked out about it, about the guts. And I didn't want to touch the green guts before. It's really gross and, and there's brains. And, but, uh, I've been watching, of course, let's bring it back alone. Uh, they had a new season over the summer and we watched it a, a little bit at a time. And it's just, it's a joy to me to watch people, I guess, starve to death because that's basically what they're doing. But that's not what it is, of course. You know, a part of it is, yeah, they're suffering. But it's just uh, in your own mind, you're like, what would you do if you were in that position? How would you fare? Would you be able to handle the hunger? Would you be able to handle 
the 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 unknown and just the, the separation anxiety that you probably get from being either away from your family, loved ones, anything like that, normal life, jobs, internet, your phone. I mean, just that alone, being away from your phone for for like six months. But uh, they eat all the weirdest things, and, and they eat just about every piece of an animal they catch or things like that. So I'm thinking, you know, if, if this was... If I was on a loan right now, I would not only be cleaning these crabs a little bit, but I'd probably probably be saving a lot of what I was cleaning. I'd be saving these guts and these brains. And I don't know if that I would eat the green guts, but you could use those for bait, you know, or something like that. And then if you get hungry enough, then you're going to eat just about anything. But um, ah, things go through my mind as I'm out on the back deck cleaning these crabs and you know in when you when you crack them open you, you pull the guts out and the, on the sides there's these these sort of like long sacks they look like they look like puffed up uh, really puffed up 3d flower petals without the colors they're not colorful really but it's like a gray gray color but those are the lungs the lungs are hanging off the crabs and uh, you just pick those off and it just doesn't doesn't seem weird to me at I mean back in the day I remember in high school uh we had to dissect dissect frogs we had to dissect uh crickets really big crickets but that was kind of the grossest thing those two things were kind of the grossest things we had to do but besides that I haven't really had to like put my yeah yeah I've cleaned a fish I've cleaned a fish which is also there's you know you see you see how you know the 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 guts come out and there's different organs, the liver and the, the stomach and the heart and all these things kind of come out and the lungs, um, not necessarily in a fish. I don't think they have lungs, gills, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, doing the crab thing was, is, uh, I don't know. It's cool now. I mean, I don't mind it at all, but the, uh, I'll end it with this. The worst part about it now isn't just, isn't the green guts, isn't the, the, you know, having to get your hands all over the place. Well, I guess that is actually the worst part. The worst part is after you wash your hands so much and it still smells like crab, crab hands. I've washed my hands at least four times since then, probably five times. And there's just, I don't really smell it, but maybe there's a hint of crab on my hands. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, but if you're out there in a lone land, you know, if you're out there by yourself just surviving, you're not uh you're not worried about crab hands, I don't think. I think you're just worried about getting as much into your stomach, nutrients, calories as possible. Fatty calories. Another thing I learned is uh, you know, you really can't survive off of lean meat. If that's all you have, you have to have fats in your diet. Uh whether that's just the fat off the meat or if you don't eat meat, some other type of fat. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something you don't really think about and you kind of take for granted because it's really easy to just go to the store and buy food, um, here in civilization, you know, but, uh, yeah, those, those things like you, you also think like, what am I missing from my diet now that I just, that I, that I don't know about? That's what makes me think, you know, when I see things like that, I learn things like that about, about nutrition and about the fact that like one guy in in past uh, past seasons uh one guy's got got a moose another guy got a, a big buck a 10 point buck and still was like towards the end of eating a lot of that that meat was starving and a lot of the meat that that gets kept is smoked so they smoke the meat but usually that renders out a lot of the fat and so they're missing a lot of the actual calories the fat calories that you get from a side of meat so I didn't know I mean things that I learned from that show it's amazing I love it <laughs> yeah so do you guys know about this nah he tweaking thing nah he tweaking nah he tweaking so mm, it's probably it, it was just something that tripped me out it was a, a little bit ago maybe a week ago or something I was I was on Instagram and I, I looked at this news site it said something about Afghanistan and reading and it's like nah he tweaking and then I was like, what is that and then I saw 
some other site that was uh, some other th- totally unrelated news topic. Maybe it was like some sports guy. And uh, and then all the comments. Nah, he tweaking. Like, what? Like, okay, I'm tweaking a little bit. What's happening here? So, uh, and I see Tom Segura. He's a comedian. I follow him on Instagram. And he makes a video that's like him tweaking. And it says his com- his. his actual comment you know or title of his video is not i'm tweaking or something like that (laughs) and i'm like okay this is something obviously i'm not really paying much attention to it but i uh i go online i take a look and i quickly find i find my i find the answer to my question and uh if you don't know you're gonna be like what okay all right whatever so a few days let me just let me just read from, you know, this news thing. Instagram users on Wednesday night began spamming pages by com- commenting, nah, he tweaking. Okay. The meme originated when Tony Hawk announced the release of a limited edition skateboard deck with his blood infused in the paint. All right. So if you remember just recently, Tony Hawk, maybe you don't follow him. You probably didn't see it, but I've, I saw it. I follow skateboarding a lot. So I saw it. Um, Tony Hawk selling a skate deck or 10 or it's actually a hundred limited limited to a hundred skate decks with his blood and in the video was him like getting his blood drawn and he's like they got my soul now it's like okay yeah they do what a, what a you know what a what a great like campaign but uh anyway and so after that happened uh Lil Nas X posted, uh, y'all rocking with it? And, uh, no, that's, I'm, I'm just gonna keep reading this because it doesn't make sense. Rap posted about the Tony Hawk deck and asked followers, y'all rocking with it? Lil Nas X, who earlier this year released Satan Shoes with drops of his blood in the soles, pointed out that the similarity between the shoes and Hawk's skate deck, commenting, nah, he tweaking. Okay, so that's where it came from. So Rap, the account Rap, posted, y'all rocking with it? And then Lil Nas X said, nah, he tweaking. <laughs> and then the, you know, the users began flooding Tony Hawk's Instagram account with nah, he tweaking, and unrelated pages. So, <laughs> God. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a thing. And Lil Nas X is basically like, that's that's discriminatory because you guys didn't say a thing about you know a problem being with the blood in the skate deck with Tony Hawk but when I put the shoe you know blood in my Satan shoes everybody's freaking out they're tweaking right so it could be racist it could be homophobic it could be all these things but it's just two different situations one you know the Satan shoe a lot of people are very religious in this country and around the world this country is very puritanical but uh, people freaked out, you know, about the Satan thing, you know. So if you would have had blood in like some angel shoes, done. Blood of Christ shoes, whatever. People would have been like, "Yeah, sign me up, bro," something like that. But but because it was Satan's shoes, I think people, you know, there's there's people are going to complain. A great way to market your your shoes though, and your your whatever you're doing, your career, uh, you're going to get some clicks when you put out shoes called Satan shoes, it's just going to happen. And I think that's what Tony Hawk and company were doing with the skate deck, the blood deck. They, they needed to sell some decks and that was a great little, little idea. So, uh, two different things. I think if you want blood on anything, as as long as it's consensual, what do I care? Who cares? I don't care. Speaking of which, you guys see, you guys saw that the uh, the baby from the cover of Nirvana Nevermind is suing the band, suing Nirvana for child pornography exploitation, sexual exploitation. Many, many years later, I think he's about 29 or 30 years old at this point, and uh, I got a little thing about it. The man who appeared as a, a naked baby on the cover of Nirvana's 1991 album, Nevermind, is suing the band over alleged child sexual exploitation. I got it pretty good. Uh, in a complaint filed Tuesday, blah, 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 he says, uh, now, the, the 
the dude, Spencer Eldon, is now 30. Says his parents never signed a release authorizing the use of his image on the album, which is a, a big no-no. You want to probably get a release signed. Um, Eldon alleges the nude image constitutes child pornography and says he has suffered lifelong damages due to his involvement. Listed as defendants on uh, Eldon's lawsuit are the band's surviving members, uh, the executors of lead singer Kurt Cobain's estate, and various record labels. Uh, he's seeking one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages for from each of the defendants plus legal costs all right it's really not that much money to be honest but uh i don't know what your thoughts are on that but it seems kind of ridiculous because he's reenacted the cover himself um and i'm sure it was somebody's idea and he's like got paid for it or something but maybe Maybe he should have gotten paid for that image if he didn't already get paid for that image. Maybe that's that's all I could really think of. Uh, aside from that, um, I, it's hard. It's hard to. I don't want to comment on the sexual exploitation. It's obviously a naked baby, and that's kind of a no go now. At the time, I think it was fine. It was fine. It was it was all good. But um, you know, that's just one of those, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess my my take on it, my hot take, is uh, a little too late. A little too late. Not, And I'm not, not saying that it's ever too late to bring up something like that. But, um, yeah, I think when you have never mind, like, tattooed on your chest or something like that, that's, that's going to be hard to ju- justify your life being destroyed if anything i think your life could have could have and should have been pretty cool uh being the uh, nirvana baby so i don't know that's just i could be wrong i could be completely wrong and i i find myself saying that a lot these days when i when i make a a public opinion about uh something like this but um i really either way i hope uh i hope he's okay and i hope uh nirvana's okay too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I wanted to talk about songwriting, but I'm sure somebody, somebody during the, uh, during the voicemails is going to, I haven't listened to the voicemails yet, but I'm sure somebody's going to ask about songwriting, so we can talk about it then. Um, hot sauce update, by the way, still love hot sauce, hasn't changed, yep, still love it, Julio's hot sauce, still my favorite, uh, people have been sending me hot sauce, shout out to Jen Mandigo, she just sent me a package, thank you, I, Maybe on the next episode that I do, next solo episode, I'll bring the hot sauce and do some some taste testing. I got to get Tom in here. We got to do the the hot ones, um, salsa version or hot sauce version rather than than like the hot wings version. But I still want to get Tom Wisniewski in here to do some uh, hot tasting. But uh, so anyway, I did a little bit of research because I came to a conclusion about myself, about my year next year (laughs) and that is this I am going to make some hot sauce in the year 2022 that's right I'm going to make my own I'm going to try to perfect a recipe or at least just something that I like and figure it figure something out so if you have a recipe that you love or any kind of hot sauce you love please let me know put it in the put it in in on the Facebook group my career podcast facebook group or anywhere any of the socials you can throw it on there i'll uh, i'll check it out but i'd love your 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 uh your recipes and in, if you want to leave a voicemail about it it'd be awesome but uh i think i'm gonna get into the hot sauce game not necessarily as like a company or starting a company to sell hot sauce but what i mean is this is my new hobby my new hobby my new obsession is hot sauce and not that it's new, but I just think the realization that it's in a full, full-blown full hobby is new. It's new to me. So if there's anybody out there, maybe maybe I need to get into like a hot sauce group, uh, like an AA-style hot sauce group, a recovery group or something. But I'm not recovering yet. I'm still addicted. <laughs> Probably always will be. But some of the – I've been kind of researching on like what I want to try to put in the hot sauce and I'm definitely going with habanero as my base pepper, but I want to augment that with serrano peppers because I really love the taste of serrano peppers. Uh, when I make 
When I make guacamole, that was something I learned. We went to Hawaii years ago, back before we had kids, Holly and I. And we took a little class, not a class, but just like, you know, you, you go and you, they teach you how to make guacamole. And we did that and we made the best guacamole. It was so amazing. And one of the things was serrano peppers, chop them up, put them in there. I've always loved them ever since then. And so I want to try habanero, but also mixed in with a little bit of serrano to give it a little something different. And then I'm into these like East Indian spices. So Indian food uses a lot of these spices like, um, like uh, cumin, turmeric, and coriander. And I'm not sure which one of those is the spice. I need to actually like do some tasting and I'll figure that out. But it's one of those spices, I think, that I really want to try to experiment with. Um, I like that Eastern vibe to my Mexican hot sauce. Uh, I, I do like regular Mexican street style hot sauce, the red sauce, the chili sauce. But I honestly like a little extra Eastern influence. I like that Pan-Asian kind of vibe, um, just a little bit, um, and, and it really works for me. So, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some some tasting and, and figure out what my recipe is gonna be. So, if anybody, if that's clicking for anybody out there listening, and you know what I'm talking about, maybe there's a style of hot sauce that already exists that I can try. Uh, Julio's has something like that. Julio's hot sauce, my favorite, has some sort of ingredient. And to be honest, haven't done the research on that. That particular, you know, you would think if it's your favorite hot sauce, why didn't you look at the label? Well, I don't know. I think about it when I don't have the label next to me, and and so that's why. <laughs> uh, coulda, shoulda, woulda. That's my life, you know. That's life. All right, you guys. Hot sauce coming in 2022 like i said i'm not gonna sell it uh, at least i mean not right away i'm gonna keep doing music for as long as i can until my my fingers fall off until my hips fall off until my voice goes out uh i'm gonna keep doing music uh, i've been songwriting i've been we've been practicing it's been it's been great it really has been great it's been very very busy very busy uh I can't say I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to the fall, but I don't think it's going to be any less busy for us. So I don't know what I'm, I'm looking forward to just, you know, the slight change in weather and, and all that, but I, I love it right now. I love the heat. I love the, I love the heat. I love the rain. I love the snow. I love it all. I really do. And I can get used to almost anything, but, um, but you know, what takes me through it all and brings me through it all is just the fact that I can do music and we can, get creative and have fun with our ideas and and there's an audience for it you know you guys uh, have proved that to us so thank you uh let's get to your voicemails and then we'll we'll wrap it up after that thank you so much all right let's i gotta unmute this thing okay here we go your voicemails i have not listened to these so if something crazy happens i i might just edit it out or something but but let's get going here we go Um, I just had a quick story that I, I wanted to share with you. Big fan of MXPX, big fan of the podcast. Um, it is October 2004. Uh, MXPX is playing at the Webster Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, as a young man, I receive a phone call from the Webster Theater saying that, uh, hey, they're going to let you know some local support out. Do you, do you guys want it? My band at the time, uh, forgive the name, everyone, uh, but it was Sleeping With Your Sister. Um, <laughs> I remember that night uh, because obviously we got to play with MXPX, but I remember that night too because the Yankees were playing the Red Sox in the, uh, to go to the World Series and lost. A girl had walked up to me and said, it's over, the Red Sox are going to the World Series just to find out uh, that she was lying and uh, the Yankees had won. Um, I just wanted to call and, and just express uh, Mike that night um, we walked into uh, your uh, backstage area um, we thank you as you were putting your pants on you were changing but you took time to, to speak to us and talk to us and uh, you even thanked us that night on stage you thanked all the bands for playing but it was just funny to hear uh, you know I want to thank sleeping with your sister for playing it was awesome um, years later I became a pretty successful photographer um i still work in the music industry today and i just want to thank you man um that that uh early interaction 
with you uh, paved the way for me. So I just wanted to say thanks. I uh, hope you're doing well. hope everyone's doing well that's listening to the podcast. And, Tom, you're not a jerk. You're just, you're just that guy, man. You're that manager that I always have to talk to. But very, very funny. Uh, hope to see you soon, man, and uh, hope you're doing well. Thanks. Right on. Thanks for calling, Brian. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I definitely remember the Hartford. I think, I think you know, I got to thank you, Brian, because Sleeping With Your Sister is an amazing name for a band. And I'm sure at the time we were like stoked to say it out loud like oh yeah oh yeah we got to thank this guy you know these guys <laughs> and uh sleeping with your sister give it up yeah i could see it i remember that show vaguely i remember the hartford of course we played there many times but um i remember just vaguely a show there where I had my pants down the whole time in the dressing room <laughs> no that's not it there was a show where i remember being in the bar after the show, during the show, before the show. I'm not sure when, but at some point during the show, I was in the bar and it was packed. And on the TVs were a, a baseball game, the Yankees, Boston. And I assume it was probably that same night because how often do the Yankees in Boston play? I don't know. <laughs> but I think it was that night. That's, that's so much fun. Um, well, that's cool. I'm glad that we weren't creepy. Uh, <laughs> that's cool, Brian. And, uh, and I'm glad that you understand Tom has a, a very hard job. Tom Chichilla, I assume you mean, um, because you got to contact him to, you know, get, get like a photo pass or things like that. But uh, he does have a hard job because there's a lot of people constantly trying to take advantage of whatever situation that, that happens. And, and so, you know, not everybody's a villain, but you got to watch out. You got to watch out. All right, let's get to the next one. Hey, Mike, it's Derek Price from Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, I'm a songwriter, too, uh, and I have some questions about songwriting. So uh, sort of a two-parter here. Basically, are there any songs you wish that you hadn't written, whether it's, uh, you know, maybe your views have changed over the years about that particular subject, or you just are like, ooh, you, you, just, you cringe when you think about it. Uh, and I guess the second question would be uh do you ever go back to any of your old unfinished songs like if you have a riff or a lyric and uh kind of polish them up and make them a whole uh a whole new song or you know finish the song you know for much later down the line all right thanks so much and uh hope to see you on a 30th anniversary tour next year cool all right derek uh lexington kentucky great spot great city it's been a while um you had two questions. One, do I regret writing any songs? And two, have I ever taken a, an old song that never made it, an old idea, and made it new? Great, you know, great songwriting questions. I can go for a while on these. I'll, I'll try to make it a decent answer. But the first one, um, do I regret any songs that I've written, Derek? No, not really. I think I think a lot of it is just growth. A lot of it is I was young then. I'm older now, and and it, when it comes to when it comes to lyrics, I mean, there's definitely things that I don't think the same way about. But I don't know if I would if I would say I would rather they not exist. Uh, that's pretty that's pretty harsh one way or the other. Because when I put a song out into the world, you know, when MX Peaks releases a song, that becomes not just our song it becomes people you know somebody listens to that song and loves it and so um you know aj from the dangerous summer i had him on the podcast a while back and he was saying that you know we just write songs and we put them out there and we don't worry about if a song is better than one of our other songs or not because sometimes people listen to one song and that's their favorite song and then some people listen to a different song and that's their favorite song and it just changes between people. And, uh, and it's very true, you know, when, when he said that, I it struck me as very true because not every song is the same and not every song hits you the same way as it hits other people. And so I don't, I don't necessarily wanna even go as far as to say I regret writing any songs. Now there are songs that I would not wanna play live or songs that I might want to change up a few lyrics, 
but it's usually it's usually honestly just the lyrics and and not even the it's not the music i mean can you be embarrassed about music i don't know i think words are more more embarrassing than music words because it's like oh you thought that you're dumb <laughs> you know what i mean but if you're like you put out a, a guitar part or an instrumental song and you're like, you thought that you're dumb, but why? It's just my interpretation of like my feeling and this is the music, you know? So it's not the same thing. Um, yeah, just interesting thoughts. All right. Um, hopefully that answers that question. I think I could keep going on it, but it's all just relative to, to what the song is. Right. Um, but overall, Overall, no. Overall, no. Even the song I hate, I'll end with this. Bad Hair Day. <laughs> I, I kind of regret that song, if anything, but it's because it's so silly and dumb. But it's almost been so long since I've written it. I wrote it in high school. I give myself a pass. I really do. I give myself a pass, and I kind of just I've had fun with music and with writing, and I've I haven't always taken it seriously and. I haven't always thought, oh, everybody's gonna hear this and think you're dumb because you're not being serious about this song and you're supposed to be in a punk band and you write some punk songs instead of these these weird hooky things that you do or whatever, you know? So like, I just, I don't, I don't worry about it. That was a long time ago. And if I wanna write Bad Hair Day part two right now, it's gonna be better, but you know, I don't, I don't know what I hate about that song. I think that it's so silly, but it's not wrong. Like it, the sentiment of the song is so true to life. It's so real life. <sighs> Unfortunately, I feel like I'm going to have people going back and listening to that song now that I've talked about it. But another song, a song I'm absolutely don't regret. Can't keep waiting. <laughs> That's a brand you know new one from from this year. But um, let's move into the next part of your question because there's a, there's a fruit fly. Uh, the, ne <laughs> the next part of your question was, are there any times where you take old ideas and put them in new songs and make them new again? And yes, yes, yes. So many songwriters that I know do this, including myself. And I think it's very natural to do because one, I've talked about this before, but I think a lot of times ideas need time to percolate. Not all ideas. Sometimes they need time to percolate and they're not ready right away. And so a lot of like the difference between my songwriting back in the day when I started to now is it just takes me longer. It doesn't take me longer to write the initial song idea about the same time. Just you know, whatever it is. But the difference today is I tweak a lot more. I edit a lot more. I change words up. I, I change parts. So you know something like say yes that was a that's a perfect example because that was a song we demoed back in the early 2000s it was a uh, part of the between the uh, before everything and after era and it wasn't finished it was demoed it didn't make the record it didn't even get recorded as 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 a record i think it was just a demo but um we just it just wasn't right it just wasn't right so we decided not to release it and and it wasn't right for not just the record, but just not to release. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but I think a lot of it was just the lyrics. So I changed up the lyrics and we kept the, the catchiest part of the song, which was like, if you, I mean, Tom Chichilla was like, we gotta do something with that song. Cause that part, and I'm like, no, I, I mean, I've been wanting to do some of that song, but what, you know? And he was just like, just mess with it. And so I did. And, and, uh, it came out like it came out you know much better lyrics it's cohesive it makes sense it's uh, a little more timeless it's not gonna you know it's 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 gonna be fine but um you know that was an idea that that's worked and there's been other songs maybe to a lesser degree that i've taken like a riff or this or that um and used it in a new song but that's very common honestly i think it's very good to do that because you you infuse, you, you know, you use the best of your ideas because not every idea is your best idea. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll document the idea. Like say with Can't Keep Waiting, I think it started with, with uh, I did the tuning. Um, 
Oh yeah, this is the tuning. So I, I, I changed up the tuning and I made the B string into A. So I tuned it down from B to A. And that allows you to do some really cool things in the key of A and D. So that's an A and that's a D. And um, it started with just like messing around with this, this. With a riff and and the line. I've been late, I've been last, I've been so wrong in the past. Maybe even right now, I just can't tell you why I am. You know, and um, and from there, okay, there's something there. There's an idea there. I knew I knew right away this riff is gonna work. You know, and, and getting that tuning, it was like, okay, that's kind of fun, you know. If you change up the tuning now and again, and this is coincidentally the same tuning as our song Wrecking Hotel Rooms. You can hear that, that tuning makes it possible to have the more open notes ringing out, so. Yeah, so back to your original question. Um, something we do as songwriters all the time is 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 let ideas percolate, you know. And uh, and that's the thing is also with just the fact that song life is different nowadays. My songwriting is is kind of the 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 day to day kind of workflow of my songwriting has changed. I used to write always in a notebook, but now. I write, uh, I write mostly on my phone and then on, on my computer or my laptop if I'm getting real deep into it. Uh, I'm doing a lot of editing, I'll, I'll do it on my laptop. But then I'm like, I feel like I'm missing part of what I used to do, which was have a notebook of all these notes and these changes. And because I'm, I'm writing on my, my phone notes. So if you change something and you, you erase something, it's gone forever. But if you write it in a notebook, it's there. You know, and sometimes I'll cross a word, cross a line out that I don't want to use. Or, but I leave, I leave it crossed out very basically so I know it's crossed out, but it's not but if it's a line that would work somewhere else, I could always use it. So things like that I, I, I was missing and so what I ended up just doing just the other day was I printed out all the new ideas I'm working on and I taped them into my notebook. And so I'm just gonna do that. You know, when I finish a song, if I hadn't already you know, I'll just tape it into my notebook and I've got the physical words right there and I can go through and I can work on ideas. I can make notes on, you know, what we're going to do as far as arrangements, where we're going to place each part, how many times we're going to do things. If anything changes like that, I can just write it into my notebook, but without having to go through and write every single lyric, it's just not necessary these days. And, you know, the only, the only time I really feel like it's necessary to write, things out is if you need to memorize them so if you need to memorize lyrics and I'm going over lyrics so much you know with with the guys in practice eventually I, I I've learned them so uh, I don't feel like I need to write but that is a good way to to remember lyrics if you write them out because you're sitting there really thinking about each line boom 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 so so yeah that's that um let's uh let's go to the next question so, some random stuff. What what could you do with a with a disposable mask other than wearing it on your face? Here's what I did. I went to the public restroom. There was no more toilet paper. I had my disposable mask. I wiped my pussy with the mask, and I threw it away after, of course. But there you go, 2020. All right, there you go, 2020. Um, <laughs> like I said, I didn't listen to these before I, I put them up. Um, this was an older one, and I uh, appreciate your call. Um, hey, you gotta do you gotta do what you gotta do in those situations. I I'm not gonna judge here. I'm gonna say that's a pretty good use of the mask, and especially since it's disposable, it's a win-win. All right, next caller. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's uh, your former attorney Dan from Ohio. Um, just finished up your voicemail episode, and one of the voicemails got me thinking of a question, uh, so I thought I'd throw it out here. Um, was there ever a time when you were listening to a song 
and you thought to yourself, hey, that's my riff. That's my song. Like some, something where someone ripped you off clearly, or at least it seemed like they had. And just a, a you know, tell a story about that, how you reacted, uh, what it was like. Uh, I think that'd be interesting to hear. You, you don't have to say, you know, who the band was or anything if you don't want to put them on blast. But I think it'd be fun to hear a story like that. So, all right. Thanks, man. As a, as our former attorney, are you gonna you, you don't you don't suggest that I name anybody by name, but that cause a lo- possible lawsuit, some libel maybe. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's happened. Uh, I think of one instance where it happened on a song from the ever passing moment, and somebody pointed out they grabbed it and they're like, listen to this, or it was ever passing moment or Buffalo, but it was like listen to this part and then listen to this. And I was like, well, that's very similar. Very, very similar. And ours did come out before. But uh, I think over the years, I just care less and less. Honestly, I I would care if it was like a straight ripoff, like like uh, when the Supertones did Punk Rock Show, but they said Rude Boy Show. That wasn't really a ripoff. I mean, that was a, that was a parody. And we would do something like that as well. So that did not make me mad at all. Um, but I think if somebody did something where it was like making fun of us, that might bum me out, but nobody's done that. I guess that's different than than uh, than ripping you off. I mean, people rip you off because they like what you did. So, so yeah. Over the years, I I take it as a compliment, and I truly do think melodies and hooks get pe- in people's head and they hear them, but then they they're not thinking about it consciously, like on the forefront of their mind. And then later on, even like months, years later, they they come up with this idea that was back there because they heard it. We've all done that. And, and I would say just my personal stance is if I notice that something I write sounds like another song that I didn't write or even even one that I did write, my own song, uh, I change it up. I change it up as much as I can and I try to take what I feel like would would not be, okay, now I try to change it enough so it would no longer be recognized as a ripoff in my opinion, you know, so, you know, everybody has varying opinions. So I think, I think it's real, it's real just subjective too. Um, Haley Williams from Paramore just recently was in the news because somebody is suing her for, or accusing her, I don't know if they're suing yet, but they're accusing her of plagiarism from her latest record. And it's an artist that she said she's never heard of and she had never heard of until she was accused of plagiarizing. So she's like, I'm very, upfront about my influences, people I love, sounds, uh, you know, artists, and, and she, the the artist that that is accusing her was not somebody that she had ever heard. So it really does happen accidentally. I think, you know, sometimes you come up with similar ideas because we're all listening to similar stuff too, you know, things that have gone before us. So yeah, to wrap it up, Over the years, I care less and less. I just want to continue making new stuff, uh, create things that people are into, and whether that's music or um, the things that surround the vehicle of music, and um, and uh, and that's it. So as long as I can continue to do that, I'm going to do it honestly, and and I'm going to try to come up with with some (laughs) with all my ideas originally as much as I possibly can. And 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 I expect most artists are the same way. All right, that's about it for voicemails. Thank you guys so much uh, for tuning into this podcast. I appreciate it. If you want to leave your own voicemail for me for the next episode, call me 360-830-6660 and leave me a voicemail. I appreciate it. Um, If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast. If you want to go the extra mile, rate and review. It helps out. It helps people find the podcast. It helps me feel like it's worth doing when you guys are subscribed to it. So uh, I appreciate that. If you don't already follow me on the uh, the socials, it's Mike Herrera TD on all the socials. And then the podcast is Mike Herrera Podcast on Instagram, Mike Herrera Pod on Twitter, and then Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group on the Facebook. Um, it's not fully, I mean, it's a Facebook group. You just go to the Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group. Um, and that's it. Bob McKnight is the editor and the producer of this podcast. So all complaints go to him. I'd appreciate it if you uh, would send him some fun messages 
uh, on his uh, socials. He's got a podcast as well called The Bob and Katie Show, so check that out. And of course, mxpx.com. Anytime you guys want to support what we do, go there, buy anything in the merch store, uh, listen to our the MXPX Challenge playlist, sign up for our mailing, emailing list, our text list, any of that really helps and it helps us find you when the world gets harder and harder for us to find people and let them know that we have shows, let them know that we have a new album. It's harder and harder, no matter how many hundreds of thousands of people follow our, our Facebook page, it's still harder and harder and harder to, to, to reach you guys. So thank you so much for listening to this podcast because that's a great way to reach you guys, of course. Um, and it's a great way for you guys to reach me. All right. See you next week. Peace out. Oh.